This week, we'll talk about accessing the Nexrad archive that's hosted for free on Amazon Web Services. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I wanted to show you how to access a Nexrad radar archive that's hosted on Amazon's Open Data Project, and all of that data is actually pushed there and the archive maintained by Unidata. This is something that's very easy to get to, and I think that you'll find it very useful if you're going back and doing case studies or just wanting to get some data that's already rolled off most of the operational style thread servers. So this is the page that describes the data and its layout. For example, the year, month, day, station, file name, uh, file schema that's used, and some examples using the command line client to download files. But I want to show you how to do that with Python. We've talked about how to put files into Amazon using the Bodo client. So this week we're going to use the Bodo client and bring files from a bucket back down to our system and then use MetPy to plot them. So first we need to do some imports. From date time, I'm going to import the date time object. I'm going to import Bodo3, import Bodo Core, and then from Bodo Core dot client, I'm going to import the config object. So first we're going to go ahead and create an S3 resource. So I'm going to call it S3. Bodo3.resource. The type of resource is S3. And the doc string here is unfortunately not terribly useful, but luckily I'm going to show you the magic incantation of the config that you're going to need to be able to access this resource, which is an instance of the config client. The signature version is going to be bodocore.unsigned. And the user agent extra, we're going to set to resource with a capital R. We can go ahead and line wrap that. And now we need to create a bucket. So this is going to point to an existing bucket on the S3 resource. And that bucket is called NOAA nextrad dash level two. Okay, so now we need to create the path that we're going to use. And if you remember from the documentation, it was year, then month, then day, then station, and then a file name. So I'm going to create a date time object for what day and hour that I'm interested in. And then I'm going to create a station variable to hold the station so that this is a more generic piece of code. So for my date time, I'm going to go with April 22nd of this year at 10Z. For the station, we're going to use KTLX. Now I'm going to create a string that is going to describe the path in this S3 bucket that I need to go to. I'm going to call it prefix. I'm going to use an F string for this. And it is going to be our date time, the year portion, the four digit year slash our date time, the two digit zero padded month, our date time, the two digit zero padded day, the station, and then the station, this is going to be the file name that, that we want to match anything that is close to this. And then our date time, year, month, day, hour. And let's go ahead and print out that prefix to make sure nothing looks fishy. Okay, so that looks reasonable. That looks like the file names that we expect. So now let's go ahead and get references to all of those objects, and I'm going to put them in a list. I'm going to call it objects. For obj in bucket dot objects dot filter prefix equals our prefix variable. So it's going to find everything that looks like our prefix 
and we're going to iterate through it just so we can see what's there. I'm going to print the name of the object, which is called its key. And then I'm going to append that object to our objects list. You can see we've got quite a few radar files here. So now we're going to pick one and plot it. And to do that, we're going to use MetPy's level two file reader, NumPy and matplotlib. So I'm going to import NumPy as in P. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And then our MetPy imports from metpy.io, I'm going to import the level two file. And then we're going to import color tables so we can use the reflectivity color table. So from metpy.plots, import C tables. And we need a T in matplotlib there. Okay, so now we're ready to read the file. Remember, we haven't actually downloaded any data yet. We just have some metadata on these objects that are in S3. I'm going to use the level two file reader. I'm going to pick the object with the fourth index in our list of objects. And then we call dot get. So that is actually going to retrieve that object. And what we want from it is the body, the actual data of the object. When we run that cell, we get the file from S3 and the level two file reader parses through it. So now we're ready to plot. First, I need to go ahead and get my color table and the norm. Those are in MetPy, and we're going to use the NWS reflectivity map. So the reflectivity norm and the reflectivity color map are going to be from ctables.registry.getWithSteps. And we've, color, we've covered ways to get color tables from MetPy in previous MetPy Monday videos. And this is the NWS reflectivity color table. And I'm going to provide a start and a step as we see in the doc string there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and create my figure and axis using plot.subplots. And I'm going to make my figure relatively large at 15 by 15. We all know that these radar volumes are made up of multiple sweeps. I'm going to just look at the first sweep and the first item in any given ray is going to be a header, and that header contains things like the azimuth angle of the ray. So in each sweep, there are many rays. The azimuth angle, we're going to create an array of them from all of the different rays in a sweep. So I'm going to use a list comprehension here. So for ray in f dot sweeps, so we're going to get all the sweeps from our file and then our sweep index of zero. We're going to iterate through those. And remember what gets appended to our list goes in the front of a list comprehension. So I'm going to go ray, the first element of the ray, which we says the header. And we're going to get the as angle attribute from it. So this just says for every ray in our given sweep, we want to get the azimuth. We're going to go ahead and get the actual reflectivity header as well. And that's going to have some information for us, like how many gates and what the gate width is and the range to the first gate. So the reflectivity header. And there is more documentation if you're not familiar with how these level two files work. Uh, there's going to be just a lot of indexing in to get things. So we're going to get our zero with sweep, the zero with item, the fourth, we're going to retrieve a key ref and the zero with item in there, which that long sequence of indexing gets us the reflectivity header. Now we need to calculate the range for each of the range gates. And we're going to do this with NumPy's A range. From the header, I'm going to retrieve the number of gates. I'm going to multiply that by the gate width that we get from the header. And I'm going to add the distance to the first gate. Now notice this is a lot more complicated than using a level three file, but we're dealing with a lot lower level data here. Finally, we're ready to get the reflectivity. 
which again, we're going to use a list comprehension for array in f.sweeps, our sweep index of zero. Then we go back to the beginning of this list comprehension and put what we're going to append to this list. The ray, the fourth element, and the key ref, and then the value. So after all that work, we finally have our data. We just have a couple more steps and then we can make a quick plot. First, I'm going to go ahead and turn that data of reflectivity into a master array instead of just a plain NumPy array. And anywhere that it is a NAN, we're going to mask that. So data is numpy.ma.array to get a master array of our reflectivity. Where the data is NAN, we are then going to set it to be masked. Finally, now we have an azimuth and a range, but we need to plot X and Y locations. So that's just a little bit of trigonometry. So our X locations are the reflectivity range times the sine of degrees to radians, because we're going to have these values in degrees, but sine needs things in radians our azimuths, and we got to do a little bit of shape manipulation here. We're going to do a very similar thing for the y's, except we're going to be looking at cosine now. And finally, we can plot the data. So we're going to use P color mesh. And if you're confused on the differences between P color and P color mesh and even IM show, we've done a relatively recent video on that. X, Y, and data. The color map is going to be our reflectivity color map. The norm is going to be the reflectivity norm that we retrieved above. And the shading, I'm going to set to auto to suppress a warning that's coming up and would be a later breaking change in matplotlib. I'm going to set the aspect of the plot to be equal and to the data limits. And finally, we're going to set a couple of ranges on each axis. All right, looks like we've got a Typo there for cosine, and we should have azimuth. Okay, and one more typo, which is p color mesh. And there we have our radar plot. So as you can see, there's a massive amount of data. And in fact, if we look at the documentation page for this, it can tell us that we've got data generally back to June of 1991. There's a lot of data that's very useful, and it just takes a few lines of Python to get to it, even iterate through it, and make a lot of plots and analyses on it. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.